Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and walk through 10 tips that new users should definitely know about UEFN to make them more efficient when building worlds. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now this first one is all about undos, which may seem trivial, but if you're coming from Fortnite Creative, this is amazing. So let's add to that power. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an object here, and I'm just going to duplicate it and add in a couple of extra ones, just so I have a little bit of undo history. Next, what I wanna go ahead and do is come up here under the edit, right up here in the top left-hand corner, and I'm gonna choose Undo History. And you'll get this little floating window. Now inside of here on the far right-hand side, you will notice that we have a little green button. And when you hover over it, it says jump to this transaction. So what we can do is actually jump back three, four, five, ten 10 undos in one go without any problems. Now the other thing that's kind of cool that's built inside of here is this little red button right here. And when you hover over it, it says set undo barrier. So if I click on this, let's go back to the very end of my actions, and I go ahead and start to hit the undo button, you'll notice it'll continue to go back, but now I can't go back any farther by hitting Control-Z or Command-Z. If you've got limited real estate, like you only have one monitor, you can actually control how big Fortnite will show up when you go ahead and launch the session and push changes. To do that, simply go into the Unreal Editor and come up here under Edit, and open up the Editor Preferences. Inside of here, underneath our settings, you'll find a little section that says game resolution, and you can control how big it'll pop up on screen. Now, this one's actually gonna lead us into the next tip. And did you know that you can actually do math inside of these little fields? This works just about anywhere inside of the editor. So for example, I've got this at set 1920 by 1080, but I want this to be 75% of what this size is. And I don't wanna do the math on a calculator. So instead, I'll go ahead and type in times 0.75 and hit enter, and now I get 1440. And let's go ahead and do that over here again, just so that you can see that, times 0.75. So now when we launch the session, that screen will show up a little bit smaller, making it easier for me to click back into Unreal Engine for Fortnite if I need to. This next tip is all about efficiency when it comes to building worlds. Now I'm gonna move the preferences out of the way, and I'm gonna show you a couple of gizmos that can be really helpful. So let's go ahead and select the bus, I'm gonna press F to zoom in on it, and hold Alt, left mouse click to actually orbit around it. I'll go ahead and bring the editor preferences back, and in the search bar up here at the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and type in the words look and feel. And these first two checkboxes right here, this enabled translate rotate widget, and this enable arc ball rotate become really helpful for environment artists. So. Let's go ahead and show you what this looks like. With this one selected, let's go ahead and turn this on. And you'll notice that we get a new widget. You can actually see it up here at the top. It has a little bit different look. So what does this actually do? Well, it actually makes it a lot easier to move things around on this plane. So as an example, if I click and drag on this yellow circle, I can actually just move this from side to side and it never goes up and down. And it's much easier to get at than the other gizmo. The other thing that's kind of cool is this blue arrow right here. Now watch this face right here on this bus. It's always going to face the same direction as this arrow. So if I click on that arrow and drag, you can see it will always face wherever my cursor is at, which is really helpful if you want something to face something very specific or you need to fine tune. Now the other one that's in here is this enable arc ball rotate. Now it's not gonna work great outside this bus, so let's go find a rock. So with the rock selected, let's go ahead and use our rotation gizmo. And you can see that I can rotate it here and here and here. But if I click in the middle, nothing happens. I just move the camera. If we turn this arc ball rotate on, now when I click in the middle of this, I can actually move this around. And this is great for rocks and it's fantastic for environment artists. Now Epic Games was awesome enough to give us a whole bunch of materials to play with, but they're kind of buried. So I'm gonna show you how to use a filter to get at them. So if we go down here into the content drawer down here in the very bottom left-hand corner, and I'm gonna click on the Epic folder, so this one right here, you'll see that we have a materials, but I don't wanna go digging through this to find them all. So instead, I'm gonna make sure that I have my Epic folder selected, and then I'm gonna come up here to this filter, which you can find right here, it's this little button. Click on this, and then come all the way down where it says material, and then come across where it says material instance. Now you'll see we have a filter right here that is filtering through this folder and all of its subsequent folders inside, because there's a lot of them. Now let's go ahead and just drag one of these onto this and you'll get a little warning, but that's okay. We're just gonna say, okay. And now I have a brick texture on here, which does some cool stuff when you rotate it. Now, here's the caveat for those that are paying attention, go back into your content drawer and you'll notice that this filter is currently turned on. We wanna turn this off, otherwise we'll have problems if we go and try and select something like the Fortnite folder. You get a bunch of things that you weren't really expecting. So make sure that you turn these filters off 
just by clicking on them to set things back to normal. Now let's go ahead and set up our content drawer so that we can find things even faster. So what we're gonna do is actually set up favorites. So in the content drawer, let's say I'm always going into Fortnite and then I'm going into galleries. Instead of galleries, I'm going into music. Instead of music, I'm going into the music block gallery. Well, that's way more clicks than I wanna deal with if I'm in, say, another one of these folders. So instead, what I'm gonna do is favorite it. And you can find your favorites right here at the very top. And you see, I've already got devices in here. So to get something in here, simply right click on the folder and then say, add to favorites. And now you'll have a favorite up here. And let me move this down a little bit. So just in case I'm down in, say, the sounds and I'm in my gadgets, if I ever need to get back to that music, I can always just click on here and I'm all the way back. Now you may have noticed that I have different colors on this, and this is actually something that's really easy to do. So let's go ahead and go to the very top where it says Fortnite. And let's say I wanna go ahead and change the color of my props folder. Simply right click on it, say set color, and you can choose a new color. Once you have a new color actually set, that color will then be added into your list of colors right here. Now this tip involves duplication, which is actually really easy to do. Simply select an object, hold down Alt, left mouse click and drag, and grab one of these arrows, or in this case, this little yellow circle, and you can bring out another one. Now, here's the caveat. I've done this with a very specific object, one of the devices. What's very important to know as of this recording is that if you have changed anything in the original and you're just duplicating the second one so that you don't have to do all that work a second time, it may cause issues. In fact, it may set both of these to work incorrectly. This is most likely a bug and will be changed in the future. So just be aware if you've duplicated a device and all of a sudden it doesn't work or the original one doesn't work or they both don't work, it might be because of this exact bug. So you're much better off actually creating a new one by dragging it out of the content drawer and placing it and then setting all of its settings. Now, this last tip is actually a bonus tip because it's more than one. What you can do is actually learn a whole lot about the Unreal Engine for Fortnite by coming to our Clever Like Creator School. You can actually sign up totally for free. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find this course right here. This will actually walk you through the fundamentals of using the Unreal Engine for Fortnite so that you can become a content creator and build all the awesome things you've ever wanted here inside of Fortnite. So there you have it. You have 10 amazing tips to get you started in UEFN. And if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go ahead and just leave a comment down below. We'll get back to you when we can. And of course, don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.